Welcome back, guys. Got a lot of feedback that you all enjoyed the Fellowship Draft Pack sealed video that we did. So we're going to go ahead and do another one. And kind of this one will be a little more fast paced since we don't have to walk through the explanation of the format and whatnot. But basically, I'll just do the same thing I did in the last video, which is pick the packs and build a sealed deck. But like I said, hopefully this video, this single video will be about as long as the last two put together. So we kind of... Um, expedite the process a little bit. If you haven't checked out those first two videos, definitely check those out, especially the first one. We'll explain the format. Not going to do any of that today. We're just going to pick our packs and get right into it. So um, like last time, so we can kind of compare our decks, I'm going to do the same pack format, which is we're going to do two fellowship, one Moria, and one Realms of the Elf Lords. And of course, one Fellowship Draft Pack. So let's get these boxes out of the way. And again, just kind of show you the layout here. That's what we're gonna be opening. And we're going to build a 40 card sealed deck with that. So let's get cracking. Just going to set these off to the side and we'll go ahead and start with our fellowship draft pack. So again, this is going to be a semi randomized chunk of fellowship and a semi randomized chunk of shadow. And this is the same one we had last time, which is we started with Moria Archer Troops. So hopefully we get something different and don't just end up with a repeat of what we had last time. But um, Oh, Enkea, that's going to be huge. So Enkeas, as I said, are randomly seeded into these, Enkea and Nertea. But as you guys probably know, Enkea is really a beast, um, especially in this kind of format. Your opponent goes up to six, you just take out their best companion. So, uh, so that's huge. So it looks like we got just the very tail end of Moria. And we're actually in the wheel with, it's going to be Isengard, it looks like. So there's Enkea, of course, and then Isengard. So these are the Isengard Wounding Minions. These are these are decent. I'd say medium in terms of this format, um, in terms of are they a good shadow, are they not? Um, so this medium shadow. Oh, and then we got Nertea too. So getting if you get an Enkea and an Nertea in the same pack, that's fantastic. And then, like I said, the, the Isengard minions have some pretty good synergy together. So we'll have a decent deck with that. And then um, let's see what we got here for free peoples. We got the Dwarf of Erebor Gimli. Aragorn. All right, so this is going to be nice. Aragorn King in Exile and Aragorn Sword. That is just... And another Aragorn. So that is just beastly that we get double Aragorn and his sword. We're off to a fantastic start. This is huge just because getting up to 10 power damage plus one in Fellowship Sealed is just um, very, very good. Uh, Burden Sam, he's better in Constructed than in Limited, but you're definitely going to still want him. There and back again, another nice card to keep your Hobbits alive. Mary obviously is pretty much junk. Oh, this is our rare. Uh, Denison's Enrage is just a pump for Moria Orcs. Maybe we play that. And we've got a pump for Elf. Got Haldir, that's another nice companion that's not Legolas. I don't know if we'll get a Legolas in here too, that'd be nice. An Arwen. This one's nice, that helps you cycle, but it's again pretty dangerous in this format to cycle with 40 card decks. And a Boromir who pumps Hobbits. This is just a much better pack than we had last time. And another Gimli, different one. But yeah, no Legolas in there is really the only thing missing, but other than that, just a fantastic draft pack. Um, for the free people's side and medium for shadow other than fantastic because we got both of these guys so that's the draft pack getting right into this stack of packs then so first off we've got fellowship always fun cracking fellowship packs guys i'm sure you all love that just because a lot of cool cards in this set we've got bilbo's pipe Toll Brandur and No Ordinary Storm. Nothing good there for uncommons. Trolls keyword, you know, medium rare. And, oh, we got a foil. Foil Goblin Marksman. That's kind of sweet. So, got that. 
And Urukai, that's going to be very good. Pump for Aragorn, we're going to use that. Frodo, uh, minion, and a Hobbit Sword. Hobbit Sword is huge in this format, guys. Obviously, even though it's a common card, just being able to get your Frodo involved in skirmishes, because you'll get up to a six power with this, that's fantastic. And then you can really actually get, get him involved instead of just keeping him on the sidelines. So that's a great pack. Um, Hobbit Sword is actually going to be your best card there. But... Um, a lot of, lot of decent playables. So let's go for another. I can tell you right now this deck's going to be a lot better than our last one. Last one was pretty bad, though. Uh, here's our uncommons. Weathertop, Trader's Voice, One Who Men May Follow. Um, we potentially want that if we get an ally. Oh, there's a nice rare, guys. Pack Fresh Goblin Armory. Look at that. Oh, and another foil. Again, it's just a common, but still kind of sweet to get a foil. And a Bounder. This is sick, guys. Bounder is the other common that you're looking for. Bounder and Hobbit Sword are your two best uh, commons to go after, and we've just pulled both of them. So this is just going to be crazy in terms of... Um, I was going to maybe do a video playing these decks together, but this one is just going to be so much better than the other one. It's just going to be ridiculous, the difference there. So... Stack that over there. Do our Moria here. All right. Not feared in sunlight. They will find the ring. Nice imitation. Again, nothing re really there for uncommons. Beyond the height of men. Again, not going to be a good rare to play in this format. Decent in Fellowship with Rukai, but... Frodo Reluctant Adventurer. So what we're going to see here is did we get a Balrog? That's always going to be your big, your money common out of the Moria pack. Speak Friend and Enter. Tentacle. Hand Axe. That'll be decent to stack on a Gimli. Another pump for Aragorn, but no Balrog. So there is our Moria pack. Let me just show you that again really quick. All right, and our last pack, Realms of the Elf Lords. Got the Orc Slayer, Royal Welcome, Isengard Servant. We're up to like three of that one, I think, and that's actually a good card. Um, in the regroup, you can exert him to make the free people's player wound a companion. So if you, if your opponent doesn't wound this guy at all, you can wound two people by, you know, exerting him twice. So pretty decent. Our rare is the orc commander. That is actually super sweet because that goes, that is the rare that goes with the deck that we got. Um, gives each other orc strength plus one. And, you know, he can have his own good exertion ability. He's like a souped up version of this. Um, where he exert to make a player wound, but he's a four vitality. And yeah, that bonus is really nice. So yeah, that's pretty cool to get the get the guy that goes with the deck we got. Might of Numenor. Oh, that might actually be decent for healing. Isengard Axe. That goes with our guys too. Um, and that's kind of the end there, guys. So very nice pool overall. Um, like I said, the huge poles, bounders, um, hobbit sword, those ones like that. So let, let's just, um, kind of get this, get this all laid out, sort between shadow and free peoples. And I'll see if I can, um, put together a deck for you guys really quick. Just bear with me on the, uh, shuffling here. Let me get let me know if you guys want me to do a giveaway of like these foils. I'm happy to do that if there's interest there. Um, and that might be kind of a fun thing to do too is um, make it more exciting for you guys where we can do something like one of the comments um, will be randomly chosen to get you know get a foil if we open it something like that. Um, so let's uh, take a look here and uh, see what we got. So I'm going to start out with the free peoples. Again, in this format, the easiest thing you can do first off is just set out all your companions and your non-companions and then see where you lie there. Mm. 
well, that's an ally. And I don't really need um, these extra um, Frodo's for any reason. Uh, like I said, we're gonna. I'm always gonna be selecting old Bilbo's heir because that would have paid off for me this time with the um, Bounder. So let me just pull that over from my stack over here. So we definitely would be playing Frodo, old Bilbo's heir, which you technically have to select before you open the packs. But like I said in my previous introductory video, that's the one I'm always going with if I have to choose blindly. And so for free peoples, Aragorn's our top guy. Definitely playing him. And definitely playing Gimli. Debatable if we want the two. I'm probably just going to play Dwarf of the Mountain Race since that's, um, in my opinion, a better one. And um, what I don't want to do is play Dwarf of Erebor and then not be able to play the Dwarf of the Mo Mountain Race because that's really nice with the reducing the shadow number. We're actually a little thin on companions. We're not, I think we're going to be okay, but we've got Haldir, Arwen, Boromir. These are all highly playable, especially Boromir. Boromir is just so good with that exert to make a hobbit strength plus three. That's very good in this format. So again, we've got six companions that are good, and then we got to decide if we want to try to go up to, to nine. Well, obviously we're playing Sam. Sam's actually good also. That's seven, and then we can get up to eight with Mary. The question is, do you even go up to eight for Mary? I don't really see a benefit in this deck of playing Mary. Um, we don't need the Signet. We don't really have any synergies for him other than like a Hobbit Sword and a Bounder. But um, yeah, I'd probably play him with the just because of the Bounder. Because we can always Bounder to keep him alive every turn. So I, I would actually change what I'm saying. I'm going to play that. So we got our eight companions, including double copy of Aragorn. I'm going to elect not to double up on the Gimli though. So that's um, that's the first part of our Free People's deck there. So we're up to eight. So we're going to get 12 other cards. And in terms of the other cards, we're going to have a couple no-brainers just right off the bat that are going to be huge for us. You're always going to want to pull any allies, any possessions. Those are just going to be blatantly obvious that you're going to want to uh, play those. So we've got, of course, that ranger sword and then hand axe. Hobbit sword is huge, as I've said multiple times. So, And then these also are just huge for keeping hobbits alive. We literally have Hobbit sword, Bounder, Boromir, and there and back again. I think that's every good tool to keep hobbits alive, um, other than just like the random skirmish canceling and pumps. But every every solid um, thing here. So this, this deck's just going to be fantastic with that. So yeah, definitely Mary's. Mary's actually going to be good. Sam's going to be good. We're going to we're going to use our hobbits in this deck. Um, then the rest of the cards uh, is pretty much going to be if you have pumps that work. So this is our tier one non-companion um, cards. And then we're basically just going to be going for if we have any pumps um, that work with our companions, we're going to throw them in here. That's a pretty easy ones to do. Um, Thought we had a little more than this. We've got Sentinels, Swordsmen, Halls of Stone, Defiance. And Defiance is... Oh, no, we got Arwen and Heldir. Yeah, so that's good. So we've got one Dwarf, one Elf, two Man. We're definitely playing those pumps. Um, I'm definitely playing this card that lets you heal. That's That's well worth it. And I'm not seeing anything offhand here in the remainder of these that I'm really excited about. But let me let me just count up where we're at. Because there's stuff like conditions and possessions that we can obviously throw in here that are not going to hurt us. I'm considering, um, considering doing this ally nonsense with allowing Aragorn to um, exert Aragorn, spot an ally until they're your group phase that alley is strength plus two and my may participate in archery fire and skirmishes i think i probably will do that because this will just be fun is play that one whom men would follow and combo it with old noakes who's just a garbage ally but we just play him down and then at some point in the game whether it's a balrog or whether it's a big urukai we just throw him in front of th that minion and let him let him soak a minion with this card so i think that that'd be a fun thing and considering i think we got space for it because there's not really any other 
um, cards here that I'm uh, feeling like we need to play. This will prevent a wound to a hobbit and goes to the support area. That's reasonable. This prevents a wound to an elf, but it costs two, so I'm not as big of a fan of that. This one, like I said, only costs one, so I think I'll throw that in there. Um, don't have Gandalf. Can do that, doesn't really do much, but again, it's just cost one and lets us get it down. Okay, yeah. I'm pretty good here. <laughs> this is kind of interesting. You can make Gimli an extra damage plus one, but I don't think that that's going to be worth it for two. Um, Got to be careful about not flooding too much Twilight in, in this because your companions are always going to be pretty weak. So what have we got here now? Two, four, six. Oh, we're at 21. So let's go ahead and throw that nice imitation out. And we're just going to go with this. So I love it. Let's just quick lay out the, the free people's side of this deck. We've got our companions you already saw. And then just laying out those the the um, rest of it. We had our possessions in those three ones. So that's the companion's possessions. Kind of clean that up. Then the latter part of the deck is our pumps. Like I said, we've got the two great pumps for Aragorn. Got the two for, or excuse me, one for dwarf, one for elf. And then we've got our amazing Hobbit cards in Bounder in there and back again. And we got our healing card in Might of Numenor. And we've got our little janky old Noakes strategy going in there, which, like I said, that definitely is fringe. You could take that out and play it, play a couple of these nice imitation cards if you want. But I think that's fun. I'm going to try it. So, so that is our free people deck. That's our 20 cards on that side. Now let's quick put together the shadow. Shadow's even usually a little bit easier. Um, so this video is going to run a little bit longer. I'm just looking at the time, guys, but I, I think it'll um, still be a reasonable length for you guys to watch. So again, we're just going to put minions and non-minions, sort those out. We're going to have a really good Isengard deck here is what it looks like to me. So we'll basically be playing Isengard and then things that are statistically good. There's that armory. I'm going to set that aside and keep that in good shape. All right. Then minions. All right. So again, just quick peruse that. I don't see anything offhand here that I'm excited to play in this pile. Um, probably play an ice and guard axe for my um, for my orcs, but that's about it. Then minion wise, again, I like to just. Um, sort these out by cost. I'm not even going to be looking at the affiliation at first. It's not as big of a deal to me. Usually, again, you're going to want to favor low-cost minions. The more expensive ones like this just don't end up being worth it. This Saruman will be kind of fun with all the orcs that we have. We got got definitely a good a good portion of orcs, and what I said about affiliation really is affiliation is actually important in terms of when you have the pack like this. I'm going to be going through here first and just picking out all of the ice and guard because we're actually going to be strong enough on theme to do that, and we're not going to be playing any of these you know high cost off theme minions. You can just set these aside, but um, we are going to go through first off and pick out all our ice and guards. So we're doing that for the ones. That guy's not really part of Isengard, but let's go those for the twos. We pulled these guys for the threes. We got one, two of those in the pack plus a third. So we've got a decent chunk there too. And then um, got a couple of the, the four cost guy too. And then Saruman. And we actually pulled that orc commander too. So this is actually looking like a really nice deck to start. I mean, one, two, three. We got 11 cards on our theme. Like I said, I'm going to throw that axe in there too cuz getting an uh, getting a little extra power in this format is is quite nice. So we got 12 cards on theme. So it means we only need to pick basically 8 that are not um, and some of our obvious choices here first off, you're always going to play and Kay and Nertea. Those are just cream of the crop. 
So let's kind of set the big Isengard aside and look at what else we got. So and K and Nertea, those are going to be huge. And then we can't play Tentacles. This Marksman is probably playable just because it's an Archer. Um, Warrior, Keyword, Goblin Man, Orc Slayer. I like I like all of these. I don't I don't like this one here because it's cost three. It's a six roaming. But I like this guy. He's Exert to Wound. So I mean, this is kind of what I'd be what I'd be looking at is these guys. And I think that might round us out where we're literally playing you know, 19 minions in that one axe. But where does that put us? That's eight. Yeah, that puts us ex at exactly 20. So the, these are our eight cards that we're playing that are not part of our theme. Obviously, those two are part of every theme. But then, uh, you know, these are kind of our our random minions. And again, none of these are none of these are great, but none of them are too bad. Well, actually, I should say this one's great too. Just statistically, Urukai are just too good. So nine power damage plus one. That guy's good. The rest of these are all medium. Um, but again, it's nice to be able to come out with a swarm out of nowhere. And when you have like the guys that cost one and two, they're really good for that. And we do have a good amount of low cost companions from our pack too with, you know, with these. So you can pull out if your opponent um, goes a little too big. You can pull all these one cost minions out of your discard pile with Nertea. That's pretty strong. So, so that's the deck there. Um, like I said, the shadow side is usually pretty easy to throw together. But I'm you know very happy with the fact that we have 12 cards on theme for Isengard and we've got Nertea and Nkea. So guys, this was a much better example of what a good fellowship draft pack deck can look like so i hope you enjoyed this video um like i said i don't think it makes any sense to play these two decks together because this one will just crush the other one and um let me know if you like the idea of doing some of these giveaways with the with the foils if you want to get a nice uh, foil goblin marksman or uh whatever the other common card was that we pulled there so uh thanks for watching the video guys and stay tuned for more